everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled public meeting of June 17, 2019 of the Township of Washington Township Council. Adequate notice of the meeting was given in accord. Can we, can we keep quiet in the back, please? Meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act by the Township Clerk to at least two newspapers in January, and this notice has been posted on the Township Bulletin Board. Township Bulletin Board on the Township website. Please notify the Municipal Clerk for any disability requirements necessary for attendance at Mayor and Council meetings. The fire exits are located through the double doors to your right and through the door on your left. Please silence all cell phones. Would everyone please stand for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. <coughs> Roll call. Councilman Bruno. Councilman Cassio. Councilman Cumming. Here. Councilman Ullman. Here. Council President DeSenum. Here. Let the record reflect. Also in attendance, Mayor Peter Calamari, Township Administrator Robert Tovo, Township Attorney Ken Poller, Township CFO Judy Curran, and Township Clerk Susan Wachowski. Reading of total bills, none tonight. Approval of minutes, none. Mr. Mayor, if you would read the proclamation for the LGBTQ plus Pride Month in the Township of Washington. I'd be happy to, thank you. Thank you. Uh, proclamation, June 2019. LGBTQ Pride Month. Whereas 50 years ago, on June 27, 1969, the New York City Police Department raided the Stonewall Inn, a bar that was frequented by members of the lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning or LGBTQ community. And whereas the Stonewall riots marked the beginning of the liberation movement that transformed the oppression of LGBTQ people into calls of pride and action, and LGBTQ Pride Month, where we commemorate the events of June 1969 and commit to achieving equal justice under the law for LGBTQ Americans. And whereas LGBTQ youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their straight peers, and more than one third of LGBTQ youths have attempted suicide, and nine out of 10 LGBTQ youths report harassment at school, and three-fifths report feeling unsafe at school. And whereas all people deserve to live with dignity and respect, free from fear and violence, and protect, protect against discrimination, regardless of their gender identity or sexual orientation. During LGBTQ Pride Month, we celebrate the proud legacy LGBTQ individuals have woven into the fabric of our nation. We honor those who have fought to per perfect our union, and we continue our work to build a society where every child grows up knowing that their country supports them, is proud of them, and has a place for them exactly as they are. Now, therefore, we, the mayor of the Township of Washington and the council of the Township of Washington, do hereby proclaim June 2019 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month in the Township of Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Motion to open the meeting up to the public. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Doing Thank all you. Calls? No, we're just doing all in favor. All in favor. Okay. Aye. Aye. Only on certain things. All right. Sue has a new procedure. Okay. <laughs> just let us know. <laughs> don't, don't get excited. <laughs> for, for pro forma motions, like opening a hearing or closing a hearing, we're we anticipate there's going to be a unanimity. The president can call for uh, gotcha. a, a, okay. a vote in that nature, right? No. That's where we save a little time with the calling out the wall call. Right. But it won't be used for everything. No. No. Have no fear. Would anybody like to come up this time and address the council? Please state your name and your address. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. My name's Ira Weiner. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Didi Padavano in Montvale, um, right at Chestnut Ridge Road. I'm here on behalf of the concerned neighbors of Washington Township. Um, what brings me here tonight, and I understand that that's uh, not on your agenda, but we received a copy of a letter from the developer's engineer to Mr. Paul Azzolino. I think he 
developer's engineer believed he still was the township engineer, apparently he's the board engineer. At any rate, the letter was requesting uh, the right to start filling wetlands as part of that project, even though the project's uh, not anywhere near ready. Um, the reason I'm here so soon is we want to make clear to the council our position that the uh, township shouldn't let anything happen here um, in light of the circumstances and the, uh, the way the um, application is currently uh, status. First, there's no valid approvals here. The, there's a, there is a permit with DEP to fill the wetlands, but that was in connection with a project which is not yet approved. Um, the variances have expired, as the developer's attorney has admitted. There's no site plan approval, because that goes because there are no variances that are needed for the site plan. <clears throat> and the developer wants to start construction before he's got any of the approvals that he needs for this project. Um, he needs uh, final, and frankly, there's no preliminary or subdivision application that's been filed. He hasn't closed on the land. Okay. Um, so that's it, it, permits from DEP only last a certain period of time because the DEP understands that things change, and if things have changed over the last six years, there's no reason rushing in and trying to uh, allow <laughs> are the this permits. To, are the permits valid? Permit is valid up through, uh, as far as I know, uh, through seventh. There's nothing wrong. Um, if they own the property, maybe they could do it, although, generally speaking, uh, the townships do not let any of the, of the work get done on the lot until there's approval. They have approval from, from DEP that they're allowed to do the work. They don't have approval from the town to do any work, and huh. that's really the problem. So the developer wants a, hasn't gotten the approvals needed, hasn't closed, hasn't gotten the approval for a sewer line, um, and it's been sitting for 18 years, and I think that the uh, on behalf of the public, you know, in terms of, you know, the lot was $120,000 18 years ago. They don't want, that hasn't even. The, but this has nothing to do with filling yeah, the wetlands. That's right. So that's let's, right. Not, let's not. I'm just saying that hasn't. Let's been, not go. No, I'm into, not going. To, I'm okay. just going to say that hasn't been decided. So he. So if the if the this should go in front of the planning board where it is, um, if he doesn't have a valid soil moving permit, I will make sure that Mr. Tovo checks in the morning to see if there's a valid soil moving permit for the filling of the wetlands because he can't do that without a, a valid soil moving permit. Right. And if he doesn't have one, he can't fill the soil, he can't fill the... Uh, but we also believe he needs an approval from the town for the project since this is in connection with a... a I don't have enough information to well, tell I, you that I, at this time. I understand that. I wasn't asking you to make the decision tonight. I wanted to let you know what our position is. Okay. And so that the council was fully aware. And I know there may be councilmen that are not, haven't even seen the letter yet. because We have not. We, yeah, no, I, I don't think anybody on this day has yeah, seen the letter. I know the mayor was copied, but not, not everybody, maybe the clerk. So that's the circumstances. So we ask you to be careful and consider that and not let this go ahead until the developer has gotten all the approvals that they would need from the planning board, and, uh, if should they get them. Mr. Tovo, can we just make sure that the building department's aware of this yes, in the morning? Sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. What is the status of that? application it's it's still before the planning board at this still point before the planning board so they don't have approval to on the project at this point for the planning board no from the planning board. right they so the, if they are doing work we they're, not, they're not doing no they, they they made a request they're not doing work there they made a request okay but i don't think it should be discussed at this particular point mike to tell you the truth uh because this, this whole thing is in litigation as well as being before the planning board and you haven't even seen a letter mm -hmm. to the engineer or from the engineer or anything like that. So I think us talking about it here is <coughs> not really appropriate to, to get into that. Okay. Will, will, will we see the letter eventually? Uh, I don't, like I said, I've never, I don't no, think I don't. anybody on this day is Will we see the letter? letter? Will it yes. Be provide? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sue just gave it to me. I'm sure. I mean, it seems the way these things work is at 7:29 the faxes start going off. So, understood. Thank you. Would anybody else like to come up and address the council at this time? I need a Robertson, 355 Calvert Street. Township of Washington. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Good evening, Council Members. Okay. 
On June 10th, 2019, we, Mrs. Bolton, Mrs. Guido, Mrs. Caffrey, and I met with Mr. Sedicase, Mayor Calamari, Mr. Toto, and Mr. Joyce in reference to the senior recreation programs in the township. We discussed the types of programs offered to us at the Forever Young program in Westwood. Not only are there exercise programs, utilizing the resources in their town, Westwood Recreation, <coughs> excuse me, has been able to offer nutrition programs through CARE One, also through Hackensack, Meridian Health at Pascac Valley Medical Center. There have been lectures on orthopedics, heart, and balance. Once a month, the healthy breakfast is offered. Up until that month, up until last month, we township seniors <coughs> were considered resident status and no fee was required of us. At our meeting on June 10th, to use our own resources, Bethany Church's pool was mentioned as a possibility for water therapy, senior water aerobics. This is a very sought after program with seniors. Once again, I am encouraging our senior township residents to visit the Forever Young program and see for themselves what is available to them. Our goal is to increase the senior activities in town by adding healthy wellness programs to the already established social ones. I emphasize wellness. The senior population is living longer and hopefully healthier. At the June 3rd meeting, it was determined that the contribution to Westwood by the township was not a monetary issue. But classes were closed and joining was the issue. The only two sessions that are not presently open are Tuesday and Thursday cardio aerobics, which we are now attending. After the summer, card after the summer cardio aerobics is also available on Fridays. This class is open. Mat yoga, melt, strength and conditioning, and pickleball are all open to registration now. Although we are meeting and talking regarding establishing more programs in township, which will take a while to bring to fruition. In the meantime, we have these wellness programs available to us now through the Forever Young program. Since the above two issues, monetary and availability, are not relevant, I ask, where are we and where are we going? Thank you. Thank you. The gentleman up here was in front of you, Mr. Bond. Good evening. My name is Frank Gozell. I live at 464 Van Emberg Ave. And I'm here to uh, follow up on an issue that I've discussed recently with the council. I'd like to thank uh, whoever was responsible the uh, slow down sign to try to control traffic on Van Ember has been placed next to Immaculate Heart. It was there on the northbound side about a week or so ago for three or four days. And I recently this week, it's on the southbound side uh, coming down the hill. What I've noticed is 
what I suspected, about a third of the cars adhere to the speed limit, which is 25 miles an hour. And about another third I actually see slowing down. And of course there's another third that just ignore the sign. And the one problem that I see with the sign is it only goes to 29 miles an hour. So it's, these cars are coming at 35, 40, all it does is flash, slow down. If you're going 28 miles an hour, it says you're going 28 miles an hour. What I see is the problem being is. You're saying the sign only goes up to 29 miles an hour? 29. Yeah, I mean, it's right in front of my house. So I, my wife and I sit out Bob, there. Is that, is that correct? I don't, yeah, I don't know if first they have it set. First I'm hearing that. Because I've, I've seen it on Colonial go up to 34, 35, so I don't, okay. It's likely a programming issue. Yeah, I know Mr. Tobo, he said there, you know, three points or something on this traffic situation. One was educating uh, the public. I think that sign helps to educate. But if it doesn't really tell them their true speed, eh, it's not doing that great of a job. And I know... There's, is that our sign or is it a state sign? Or? No, it's ours. It or is. It's our, it's our radar. It oh, is that's ours. wonderful. Yeah, I, I think it's really effective. I mean, I see more cars slowing down. And then the big thing there, it's, it's there 24 hours a day. You know, when the black and whites are out there, I see everybody slowing down, but maybe they're out there for like 15, 20 minutes. And then, you know, when they leave, it's, it's a free for all again. And again, even you know, with Immaculate Heart, with the signage, hopefully it's a school zone. I know summer's coming, but maybe by the start of next season, we can get some signs up there. I think we have to remind the motorists that they are speeding in excess. Okay. As a matter of fact, I think I asked you uh, at a meeting or two ago, how many, how many speeding <laughs> tickets or summonses are written? Do you have that we number? We have that information. I do, yes. If you contact Mr. Tobo in the morning, he can give you that information. Okay, okay fine. Yeah. Again, there's I'd like monthly, to thank... There's a monthly list generated. Yeah, I'd like to thank whoever was involved in putting it there. And I think it's a, it's a great program. I know that it's a portable sign. It should be maybe moved to different locations. It, 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 was, it gets moved from... Yeah. Our, but there's got to be some kind of quantitative... Is it generating any quantitative data? Like how many people are speeding or... Yeah, we do have info on the average speed, the number of... Uh, Traffic details, number of summons issued. So, if you want to give me a call tomorrow, we can no, go. No, no, on that. that sign in particular, like in a, in a 24 hour period, is it saying there were 320 people speeding? Yeah, the sign does collect data as far as the speed and the number of vehicles. It does. So, that means the police or patrol can actually devote their resources to the most critical areas at the most critical time. Correct. By using that data. Wonderful. It's a great thing. Keep it up. Thank you. Can I make one comment, Mike? Yes, Bob. Uh, I, I did go back and look at the reports for last, for April. I believe there were seven speeding tickets issued for the month of April. In all towns? Yeah, that's not a lot, but that's, like that, that, that's what the report said, so. If I may be on terms, you'll probably hire an officer. <laughs> I'm issuing one summons to shift for a day if you pay a settlement. Would anybody like to come up and address the council at this time? Mrs. Ball? Well, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, it might be a little bit of an issue if you know my name before I get to the podium. Well, you are my that children. means that I. No, you were my children's <laughs> nurse and all well, my one child, because you one, didn't see my other one, one yet. So. But, uh, you don't even know it, I have another one, right? Does it mean <laughs> that I, I've been here too often? I, I'm, I hope not. 71 Andrea Lane in the Township of Washington. And Mr. Cummings, great job on the air conditioning. I brought my sweater today. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of this, it, it's warm for us and others are cold. There's an article in the New York Times said, about 30 years ago, relative to we saw in Court Plaza, 
one person at the one desk is cold and the person at the next <coughs> desk is hot. It, it, there's no way around it. Unless that's why we, you bring a sweater. <laughs> that's why you, you bring a sweater, and that's why I take my jacket off. <laughs> thank uh, you. I have two quick comments. <coughs> sure. um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Calamari for taking time out of his personal schedule to meet with us last Monday. We look forward to another meeting on the 24th where we hope to be part of the solution. Um, and I know we've had some miscommunication errors um, along the course of this uh, problem. So I hope that you're in receipt of an email from the director of the Westwood Community Center, which confirms that there are only two cl classes that are closed, and yes. all the other classes are open to all of the senior oh. residents in the community. We are in receipt yes. of that. Yes, thank you. Of our community. Yes, but they're open to anyone. Township, Hillsdale, Emerson, uh, no, but of course good. now we have to pay for those classes, which is what we're trying to resolve. But thank you very much, sir. And say hello to your daughter for me. Son. <laughs> Would anybody else like to come up and address the council at this time? I didn't think you were going to hide from me. I didn't think you were going to hide back there. I was waiting for you to raise your hand. William Ferrara, 2556 Cleveland Avenue. First, I'd like to thank you for responding to my letter, my email uh, last month about questions about the budget. The only question, the only concern I have is in developing the reserve or the uh, charge for the uncollected taxes, you use the percentage of 98.219. And if you go back to the audit reports, the lowest it's been in the last five years is 98 and a half. It goes up to 99. So I would think that a, re a moving average would be better. In terms Judy, of we have an answer for why we did that? I did address that. Yeah, that was oh, it was addressed in the, in yeah, the email? Yeah, but we but, but, but didn't address the exact numbers. The numbers. Okay. Um, I, I'm particularly concerned because the town has historically had a uh, policy of being very conservative with its finances and reserves and so forth. And now we're facing practically a 10% tax increase. And I wonder if we shouldn't look at some of these conservative policies and see if we shouldn't be a little bit less conservative. Uh, and that, that's my concern about that. Um, I also wanted to go address two things in the current agenda. The first one is this proposed uh, ordinance about flood damage pre pre prevention. Yes. Um, my concern is that there are t area, most areas in this town are on subject to flooding, I believe. And I'm concerned that... We do have is, residents that, play f that pay for flood hazard insurance. I did. And without, yes. this, and without this ordinance, they will no longer be able to have flood hazard insurance if they re are required. So it's a state, it's a <laughs> mandate by the DEP <laughs> that we amend our ordinance to meet all the new 2019 guidelines. So the residents in township that do need flood hazard insurance are still eligible for that insurance. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mr. Brown? Well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not my understanding because I, understand, I have a home in a town that is very much involved in flood hazard insurance along the shore in Delaware. And the explanations we've gotten about uh, flood mitigation proposals. Well, this is not a flood mitigation. This is a flood. This is uh, a flood damage prevention provision to minimize public and private losses. Okay. So it's about repetitive claims and being able to participate in the national <clears throat> uh, flood prevention programs. Because my concern is that those areas of town that are not, which I think is the majority of town, is not could potentially have some. Uh, reduction in the value of their properties if there is, because the assumption is that you live in a flood damage area. That is not so, the case. Okay, fine. The second thing has to do with 19226. Does it support the progress recommendations of this Jersey Economic and Financial yep. Policy? It doesn't say what the recommendations are or anything. It's a 39 page booklet that you're more than well, welcome to have if you'd like. I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not interested in it. I'm not voting on it. You are. <laughs> well, so, we've all we've all reviewed it and good. Uh, okay. I hope you all agree with it. So then I go to uh, I want to talk about Clark Field for a minute. Uh, we were over there last Wednesday. I take care of my grandson. We were over there last Wednesday when the DPW was putting in the library stuff and we talked to them and they indicated that probably the playground equipment will be cleaned up in the next couple of weeks and all of the um, uh, 
uh, hardware for the swings are going to be replaced because that's never been done. And uh, if that's true, I hope it is. I want to thank you very much because it certainly needs it because the, that equipment is filthy if you look at it. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about is the garbage cans that are in all the fields. These open garbage cans, why, I think we, it's a health issue that they're filled and spilled over and animals get in and out. There are one or two cans at Clark Field <laughs> that have covers on them near the baseball field. And I think that they should be replaced all, all over the field, on all, all, the, on all the parks, with that type of a uh, can. Um, the other thing has to do with opening the bathrooms. They weren't opened until the middle of April this year. I don't know why they're not open in March, because people start using them in March. I can see closing in that's December, controlled, January. That's February. controlled by the water company. We do not have control of that. The, the water company controls opening the, the... The water meter has to be installed by Suez. So until the water meter is reinstalled every year, because it comes, so in November, Suez comes and takes their water meter right. back. And then come early spring, we get put on a list, like all the towns in Bergen County do. And they usually get to us, sometimes they get to us earlier, and this year it was later. Yeah. So that is, so it is out of our, we, there were, people, made, there were people looking to go to the bathroom. Uh, you know, eventually they put in a porta job. But that's, if Suez controls it, I would think some influence had them do it earlier. We've uh, tried. Okay. Well, don't pay the bill. Um, question about Sherry Field. My son, grandson also plays at Sherry Field. And I've, the condition of the parking lot is pretty bad down there. Um, I don't know whether it has to, is it, what has to be done to get it graded or paved or whatever, but it's, it's pretty bad shape. So I just think you should look at that. And the other thing that some of the parents who's kids, especially the girls and the kids, the little kids who play kickball, there's no shelter for them. It's all, you think it hit, it's not, they're not dug out on that end of the field. And I think the same condition exists at Gardner Field, so I think at some point in time you should consider doing that as well. Um, then I wanted to talk for one minute about the firehouse. Uh, one minute, you have one minute left. So. Okay, six million dollars, and that includes putting in the fire department and the, and the ambulance corps. But when Mr. Connolly made his presentation a few months ago, I got the impression that it was going to be the fire department, a hallway, and then the ambulance corps, with a lot of duplication of facilities, laundry and some of the meeting rooms or whatever. And it's not going to be, uh, it's not really a combined facility. It's one facility, one building with two separate facilities in it. Um, and I'm just wondering what the cost is of putting the ambulance corps in that building is because I understand the reasons why the fire department needs to be replaced. That's the problem with the building and the equipment can't get in there. But I've never heard anything where the ambulance corps was complaining or had issues with their facility that they needed to have it adjust. So I wonder what we're paying to have an ambulance corps in that building as well. And given the physical location of it and the traffic outside, I'm just concerned about them being able to get out, or even the fire department being able to get out in the middle of the rush hour. Even well, they get out now, so. Huh? They managed to get out now. Well, so. the ambulance court doesn't, not there, Mike. It's just, um, I did do one check. Montvale had its ambulance, its fire department built in 2017, and they spent the, the ordinance $5.1 million, and they didn't, they didn't hit $5 million. So, we've got a million dollar difference right there, so. Um, I think you're making a mistake when you say the new firehouse is gonna be $6 million. That's the number that you choose. So, I haven't heard anybody say anything different. Well, I think that's the cost of building a shell there. It doesn't right. include the cost of uh, furniture and equipment that would need to go in uh, because that was pulled out in the last presentation. And I think the, uh, my personal opinion is that there is, uh, we've underestimated the cost to bring the site to uh, the finished product. And, you know, so I think it's a mistake to say the new firehouse is going to cost six million or the new emergency service building is going to be six million. I think the project is going to be above that. So uh, the six million is just for a shell that 
will house those facilities and some uh, of the major equipment, but not the furniture and equipment. Thank you, Mr. Well, when will we have some? We'll have a presentation in the upcoming month of, uh, possibly the upcoming month of, I mean, from the you architect. The furniture, they have furniture now. We've hired a professional architect, and he designed, he designed the Montvale Firehouse. Okay. It is the same architect. Okay. He has a professional license in architecture, okay. and I don't believe he would do anything unethical to bring the numbers well, down, to, uh, as Mr. Allman just stated. He, he has, a, he has, a, he has a, 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 a license from the state of New Jersey, okay. and he would not put that up in any way or fashion to bring the numbers down to where we think they should be. He believes the building at this point, his cost opinion, is $6.085 million. And that is his cost opinion as a professional architect. <clears throat> he's done this, he's done, like you just said, the Montvale one, he is the architect of record there. He is the architect of record at New Milford. He has costs from there also. So I don't, you know, when we're throwing, you know, stuff at the architect with him not being here, what we should just think about things because, you know, he's put his license seal on it and says, this is my cost opinion. You know, it, when we're preparing cost opinions, it's not, it's a magical ball, right? We, we take prices from Montvale, we take prices from here, we come up with an educated guess of what we think they should cost, and that's his cost. So, thank you, Mr. Farrar. Okay. Thank you. Would anybody else like to come up and address the council at this time? Seeing no one, do I have a motion to close? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Michael, just on the point you made, um, the furniture, so the number that we started with was five point. <coughs> I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me, Mike. Well, I do, thankfully. I, but you and have them in front of you. I do not have them We in went front to 590, okay. and the architect magically removed $72,000 $72, in furniture and magically found uh, a $40,000 a 40, savings, or excuse me, a $62,000 savings because he didn't have to make copies of the plan. So I do think that there are issues with the numbers. And you know, I look forward to him presenting next week because he pulled $130,000 out of the plan and we're still at six million. So I do think that the number is gonna change. I do believe it's gonna be over six million. And you know, we'll have to see where those numbers are. That's, that's why he's coming in. Ordinances, adoption, second reading, none. Introduction, first reading. Ordinance number 19-12, an ordinance establishing flood damage prevention provisions to minimize public and private losses due to flood conditions in specific areas within the Township of Washington. Motion to introduce and pass ordinance number 19-12 at first reading by title. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Bruno. Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Desetta? Yes. Resolution number 19-216, authorizing publication of, ortho of ordinance number 19-12 and schedule a public hearing. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Desetta? Yes. Resolutions under consent agenda. All the following items have been determined to have the unanimous consent of council and will be enacted in one motion. Should any item require independent consideration, any council member may have such item removed from the consent agenda. Resolution 19-217, authorize the sale of surplus property no longer needed for public use on an online auction website. Resolution 19-218, approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Ridgewood Road Project. Resolution 19-219, authorized renewal of plenary retail consumption license for Island Way, trading as Bakari Grill year 2019-2020. Resolution 2019-2020, uh, 220, excuse me, authorized renewal of plenary retail consumption license for Amy LLC, trading as Doghouse Saloon and Grill year 2019-2020. Resolution 19-221, authorized renewal of plenary Retail consumption license for TJG Inc. Trading as Seasons Catering, year 2019 to 2020. Resolution 19-222, 
authorize renewal of plenary retail distribution license for Township Liquors year 2019 to 2020. Resolution number 19-223, authorize renewal of club license for the Washington Township Columbian Club year 2019 to 2020. <coughs> Resolution 19-224, authorize renewal of club license for Washington Township Recreation Club, year 2019 to 2020. Resolution 19-225, authorize renewal of plenary license, retail consumption license for CB restaurants, trading as Charlie Brown's, year 2019 to 2020. Resolution 19-226, support of path to progress recommendations made by the New Jersey Economic and Fiscal Policy Work Group. Resolution 19-227, award of contract to GLD Associates, Inc., 98 Larned Road, Summit, New Jersey, as grant writer for a term to expire December 31st, 2019. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Everybody with, okay with everything on there? No. Uh, I'd like to remove uh, 226. 226, okay. And uh, I'd like to discuss 227. So we have a motion for everything, Two, but- I'm sorry, 217. 217. Resolu so to move on, 218, 219, 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, 225. We have a motion, second, we have roll call. Councilman Bruno. Councilman Cummings? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Decetta? Yes. Mr. Bruno, you asked for 19-217 to be removed? Yeah, so this is uh, what actually is the surplus property. <clears throat> you were given a list in your packet of all the vehicles yeah, to be- I was out of town, so I, this is, oh, this is vehicles and stuff? It was all kinds of equipment, yes. There's a list <laughs> the in your packet. Page. The second page of your packet has all the uh, it's vehicles. Not, it's not it's in your packet. It's not land, though. Not, not land or anything, just personal property? Just, per, it just okay. uh, old police cars. Okay, fine. The, good, the good. old bus, stuff like that. Okay, that's good. Anybody else okay with 217 if we can proceed with that one? Roll call for 217. How about a motion? A motion, please, for 217. So moved. Second. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Cummings? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Tisana? Yes. Mr. Ullman, you had asked for 226 to be removed? Uh, yeah, I'd like that voted on separately. Uh, but um, regarding 227, uh, so this is for GLD Associates. Do we know the scope of the grants that they're writing for? Any grant that we want to apply for, they will work with us on or do it for us. And how are they... Uh, What's the compensation model for them? It is a monthly rate of $2,500. It's a 30000 annual fee, right? Correct. And is there a scope or a limit on how many we can request they write? No. question as to the 30,000. So generally, I think we spoke to somebody back when that was doing a 10% deal uh, on what they get with no fee at all. So the 30,000, is there a, a minimum that they should deliver to the town of you know, a half a million dollars in grants? Do we have any kind of minimum that we're trying to hold them to? There's no minimum guarantee. Nothing? No. The woman who had offered as the the percent is no longer there. No, no, she's not there. That was just a proposal. And that was 25 percent. Michael, what else did you have? Mr. Bruno, is your microphone on? Uh, maybe not. Thank okay. you. It's better. I'm going to repeat it. I don't have to repeat no, it. No, no. Do you have any other questions? Are you, are you reviewing 227, Mike? Um... And is this, does this, is this exclusive to, does that make them our exclusive grant writer? So I know I had forwarded uh, firehouse grants, 
I guess if there's a second organization that perhaps has a greater specialty, would we want to explore them? I, you know, I, I guess it's not clear to me understanding we have quite a bit of building and infrastructure ahead of us, capital plan, we have a firehouse, a DMF, we have fire trucks, we have fire equipment. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunity. Uh, we feel that GL, GLD is best positioned to secure those grants. We do, in interviews with both companies, and I think both of them are outstanding firms. Um, GLD has a wider range of uh, grants to go after. Uh, both grant writers interviewed agreed that there's currently no funding for any fire um, or first responder buildings, but there are for apparatus. Uh, both vendors had uh, a great deal of success receiving those grants. So I'm comfortable with both of them in the fire um, services, but I'm, we're more comfortable with GLD overall. And GLD, if you look at page six and seven, uh, six and seven of their what dear Mike, it shows that they've received uh, fire station number two in uh, community, from community affairs for Garfield, um, for a bunch of other towns, all, uh, both for Garfield there, 44,000, 44,000. Um, Safe Street to Schools grant of 150,000. <coughs> so their what dear is on the. Uh, I get so I I did see uh, some of those that you mentioned, Mike. I guess my my concern is, or my question is, do do we identify the grant and ask them to write it, or are they actively looking at our capital plan or uh, list of projects, uh, so they are actively searching grants that we that we could benefit for. I was under the impression, Mr. Tova, that they would be helping us. We would be asking them for which grants we'd like the Navy us. Suggesting yeah. grants to us, correct? The answer is actually both. Yeah. There's already some grants that are upcoming that uh, GLD has advised us of. We'll open up in the next couple of weeks, and they made us aware of those. Along with that, naturally, if we see grants or identify opportunities, we would instruct them to prepare the, uh, bid, um, the grant package. So I think, Mike, the way, the way I looked at it was um, firehouse grants would cost us 9000 to submit two applications, and he gets that whether we get the grant or not. So if we, for 2500 for the last four months or six months, it's going to be a little bit more, it's kind of going to break even if we fill that two firehouse grants. But we'll be able to get multiple grants from GLD is the way I saw it when I spoke to Mr. Toto about it. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would ask is if they are approved that... Uh, if we could get a monthly report on the grants that they are applying for on behalf of the township and what uh, a regular update on those? Certainly. Okay. No further questions. Did you have anything on 226 or you just wanted a separate vote on 226? Separate vote. So we're going to have a separate vote on 226 first, too, please. Motion for 226. So moved. Second. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. The 226, we'll 226 is, is, Mr. Allman yeah, so asked for 226 to be removed and 227 to be removed. So the 226, which one, which he is wanted this one 226, there? he wanted a separate vote for the fiscal. No, I know, but so what are they doing here? It's the economic work, uh, economic and fiscal policy work group packet. This is the packet that was in your package oh, okay. the last two meetings. Yeah. Okay, second. Mr. Bruno, second. Roll call. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Cummins? Yes. Councilman Ullman? No. Council President DeSenna? Abstain. Resolution 19 227, the award of contract to GLD Associates. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President DeSena? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. It's only taken us two and a half years, but we now have a grant writer in the town of Washington. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Tobo, for getting it done. My pleasure. Motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
quick little PSA, uh, robocall prevention reminder in an attempt to minimize the number of calls you receive, the experts suggest placing your numbers, landline, and cell phones on the FTC Do Not Call list, register by phone, or online at donotcall.gov. <coughs> Remember to remain vigilant when someone calls and ask for personal information, especially if you do not solicit the call. Mosquito control public notice in compliance with section 9.10 of the New Jersey Pesticide Control Code, the Bergen County Department of Public Works Mosquito Control Division will be applying pesticides for the control and reduction of adult mosquito populations on an area-wide basis as needed throughout Bergen County during the period from April 30, 2019 to October 31, 2019. For more information on mosquitoes and mosquito control, contact the Bergen County Mosquito Control Program at 201-634-2880 or 201-634-2881. 2019 Summer Concert Series, backed by popular demand, the township will host two summer concerts this summer at Memorial Field. The first concert will be held July 12th at 7 p.m. and feature <coughs> Asbury Fever. The second concert will be held on July 19th at 7 p.m. and feature Rubik's Cube. Bring your chairs, visit the website for additional information. Township paper shredding and e-recycling event will take place on Saturday, July 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in Town Hall parking lot. Keep your cars locked, take your key fobs out. It is always important to take precautions and stay safe. If you see something, say something. Reminder, if you are having a raffle, a permit is required, please visit the Township Clerk. The Township Summer Camp Program begins on Monday, June 24th. The Township Library Summer Reading Program begins on Wednesday, June 26th. Thank you. So moving to consent agenda. Conference agenda. The project tracker. Hello. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, items that have been updated since the uh, last uh, council meeting. 88 curb cuts on county roads. Final calculations are being prepared, so we can issue a PO to the vendor. Bottom of that page, radio system upgrade analysis. We have a meeting this Friday with the vendor to review the costing models. Signage, we have an additional vendor who has uh, given us preliminary numbers, hope to have them finalized by week's end so we can choose the vendor to move forward on the project. That's all for that page. Grant writer we just reviewed, I'm sorry about that, uh, police records clerk and admin. Um, we hope to have a decision on that by week's end. Grant writer thank you to the council for approving uh, GLD. Town Hall light repairs due to drainage. We met with the contractor. They've agreed to uh, do some saw cuts, remove some asphalt and some um, sidewalk that were laid during the winter months and repair the lighting in front of Town Hall. Just waiting on the contractor to give us a date when they will begin that. WCTV upgrades, all equipment has been ordered. DMF paint machine updated as of today. A requisition has been cut to purchase uh, the new paint machine. Uh, township com computer server has been ordered. Town hall access control wiring began on Friday. Cordes upgrades and security. Most equipment has been ordered. We have a few quotes still remaining or proposals still remaining um, for some larger pieces of that. We should have that done by uh, the end of uh, June. And new flags for the council chambers have been ordered. Thank you, Mr. Tobin. Any questions, gentlemen? I have a, a question on the road program. <clears throat> we talk about what we're going to do, and but there's, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, concerns and questions regarding the roads that have cracked over the years. And there's money in, uh, either in an insurance fund or we held back money. Where are we with all these roads and, and, and the, uh, you know, trying to at least get them fixed again? I have no list of roads that um, either failed their core test or reported as being cracked and still have money in their uh, in their bond accounts. Uh, so if there's more information that is available, please provide it to me. Well, Mountain Avenue is one of them, so it, no, no, it there's cracked. The mountain and cracked one year was Mountain was paid. 17? Mm, no, Mountain was done last year or the year this year? I last year, I believe. Bob. If we have a list and you can provide it, provide it to me, I'd be happy to look into all of them. And Marianne, what's your block? Adams. Adams is another one. They did crack seal, but it's 
Mr. Ferraro always has his chestnut. chestnut. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there, Bob, that I think we have to relive, revisit or drive around. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Allman, Mr. Cummins? On the project tracker? Yeah, on the project tracker. Uh, um, Not on the tracker. Just uh, in terms of the um, renovation to the DMF, who is um, leading that project? So evaluating the temp location uh, during the demo and construction, uh, and you know, where does that stand? Because uh, we're clearly we're moving ahead with the firehouse; it's it's making progress. If we have some state mandated deadlines for the remediation, um, yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, it seems that we are. You know, I don't know if there's progress being made if we've selected an architect, if Boswell is involved. Boswell is involved, and the first thing we're doing is trying to uh, analyze our needs for either short term or long term. If we need temporary housing, how much space do we do we need? What's going to be there uh, going forward? Are we going to keep the, the building where it is? If so, where on the property will be will it be constructed? So there are a lot of moving parts to this, and we are working currently with Boswell on that. I don't believe it will stay in their court. At some point, it will have to move on to uh, an architect or other experts. Okay. Thank you. And how does the ambulance building fit into this whole project? Uh, a number of different ways, actually. That could be a uh, cornerstone for a new building. It could be something that uh, is repurposed if we change location. So there's, there's a number of different options there. It could be, could be uh, demoed and you know, a new building built in its place. So we're evaluating all those options. And from the legal standpoint, Ken, with the with the deed and the the uh, the lease, are we okay? Well, yeah, we're gonna we're going to give a lease to the uh, to the ambulance corps, uh, and the deed once they move the, the that deed, the property will revert back to the town okay. under the terms of the deed. <clears throat> Anything else, gentlemen, on the project tracker? Mr. Tobo, the electrical inspector, is on the agenda next. Yes, sir. As you recall, earlier this year, um, our electrical subcode uh, inspector had resigned, and uh, Jason Francis has been recommended by uh, John Cialis to take his place, and uh, he can start immediately. His resume and his certifications are attached for your review. Salary will remain the same as our prior inspector. Gentlemen, does anybody have any questions on the new gentleman's uh, credentials? You're okay with them, Mr. Cummings? Yes, sir. Electric HHS. Yeah. That's the best. Mr. That's Alden, the you have any issues highest rating you inspector? can get. Excuse me. No. We need to take a vote on this, uh, Bob? No. 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 Okay. We're all okay with it. Thank you. Moving on under council, letter, letter received asking support for the Bergen County American Legion Centennial Committee, Sue. Just looking for a supporting resolution from the council for the Centennial Committee. No. Do a feel for what you would like to do if you want to join on board. I'm okay with joining on board. Is everybody else okay with joining on board in this, the uh, passing a resolution to support the American Legion Centennial Committee? Who's yes, sir. Are they, okay are they town people? They're, the it's, it's just the uh, entire American it's Legion. County. It's the whole it's organization. organization. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. We okay with it? Mr. Allman, you okay with it? Yes. You can proceed to the next meeting, too. Thank you. Uh, financials, uh, Bob, you had asked for the C6 schedules. Well, C6, and then you have, I guess, Judy's going to make a presentation at what we cancel. That's what that is. Yep. We, we did have a meeting. Um, do you need to have a You have the microphone, yeah. please, Judy. We did have a meeting, uh, Mayor Calmeyer, myself, and Mr. Tobo. Um, I don't know if Mr. Tobo, if you want to speak to what happened at this point, or? Yeah, we reviewed everything on the uh, C6, and we're uh, close to making a recommendation to council regarding all the outstanding ordinances, what should be canceled, what should be used for its intended purpose, and what may, what may need to be uh, repurposed to meet uh, township needs. Uh, we are working on that. Should have something to council in the very near future. Okay, so we have to have something done because the gentleman's going to write up a resolution for us. So I went through each one, if I may. I mean, I don't know why we don't have an answer. We should have an answer by now. 
But if we go to 1509, I went from 1507 all the way up and said we don't we we don't need it. That that was my my game plan. 1509 there's 26,000 we haven't used and if I read it, I pulled it up. It's for dump trucks. But yet we're we're spending money in our capital for dump trucks when we have 26,000 still left. There's 46 the 146,000 for 1602 is is money that's left from roads. Again, we were trying to reconcile this, what's left over, but we haven't done it. 1703, it's left over from roads. So there's a total of over $200,000. 1704 was money that was put for the DMF and the firehouse that we should use for our projects. So I thought 1704 was never funded. I don't Judy. think 1704 has cash. 1704 was never funded is what I was told. No, we did some of it. But this is left. This is this is left that we're paying bans on, and and that you know nothing's happening with it. Everything else above it. Seventeen oh four seventy five thousand is uh, funded. We took bans out on that last year. Right. Just seventy five, not one hundred forty. No, no, one hundred forty six thousand was for the roads. That's that's sixteen oh two. So my recommendation, rather than us you know wait for another year to get this done, is that we take fifteen oh four and above. And cancel everything. If you want to use the money, 1509 for the roads, that's fine. 146, 1602 is for the roads. That'll bring our $700,000 down. You have the DMF 75,000 firehouse that you can use for something. And that would be my recommendation. I don't. I don't think we need to keep waiting on this for another. You know, another few more weeks. I mean, it's been years, literally years. So I think you should take a good hard look at this and make a decision by the end of this week, um, be done with it. I did, but I don't think I have the final say. So what's your decision? I mean, that's my decision. You're the CFO. I mean, um, I'm, I'm not the well, CFO, but I I, I, um, I thought, like, for instance, um, with the one with the one, um, 1509, there's 26,943 left in that. Okay. Yeah. The, we uh, could use part of that for a vehicle that we need to purchase this year. I agree. That would be part of it. Yeah. I would cancel all the small balances. Um, 1307, improvement to Colonial Boulevard, the project is complete, I would cancel that. Um, 1312, the project is complete, I would cancel that, okay. Um, I would cancel 1411, Memorial Field, because we have another ordinance that has Memorial Field in it. Um, uh, the, uh, the other discussion that I did have with the auditor and with the um, bonding attorney was that um, 16, 17, and 18 are fairly new. I could see maybe canceling 16, 17, and 18. You might want to leave off because they are fairly yeah, I'm new. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not recommending that. I'm recommending 1507 and above. And everything else, we have uh, money. Well, I that's, mean, that's what I have coming out. Okay, so, so. that's $455,758 that we can pay and, and apply against our six million in bands or whatever you want to do with it. The only thing that did come up was that they do believe there might be some work still to be done on Memorial Field with 1504. That was a part of a discussion. I don't know if that is or not. 1504 was, was, was 150,000 or 150,000 we took out for engineering fees. It's specifically for engineering fees. And I understand you can't use this money unless it's specifically for that purpose. So we're not going to spend 123,000 in engineering fees. We've been paying money for it. This was for the turf field. I think the ordinance calls for something else. No, I read it. I it. Have it. It's engineering fees, Judy, which we're not going to use, and it was for the turf field. Let's see. We put the cart before the horse on this one. Well, the ordinance reads a whole inclusive list. I know, but, we, but if you go down, you'll see it's for engineering fees. If you see where the dollar amount is, it'll say for engineering fees for turf field. But you can look at that. I, I don't and think I, we, look at it, I don't think we need it. So I, I'm in agreement with you. So I, I don't, you know. Okay. Who makes the decision? Is this is this the mayor? Um, I would think council would have to vote. I mean, I don't know. Do you know Ken? <laughs> we're waiting for the. No, we're waiting for, for the, the. Yes, the auditor. I mean, we're I waiting make, for I the. Uh, I'd have to make a recommendation. Maybe you would vote upon it. Yep. 
I guess for the next meeting, if we could have the recommendation, please, Chief. When you say 1504 and above, do you mean then earlier? Yes. Yeah, 1504. Going up. And then 14, 13, 12, 98, 99, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah. And then the other ones, you know, the 1509 is for dump trucks, so we can use that. The 1602 are for roads, the 1703 are for roads, so that, you know, that's over 200,000. What the, what the 1413? It's pretty old, but there's 17, Which one? 1413. I couldn't find that. 1413 is various improvements. Yeah, but you have to read it. I couldn't find it on the internet. We didn't, we didn't go down to 14 on the ordinances. Does that mean we don't have 99 on the? I couldn't see it on the internet, yeah. No. I, I think, didn't get them. I, I have them all put down. I dug down. deep. 1413. <coughs> Is improvements to Woodfield Road, improvements to various streets. So you might want to consider that for some of the paving. That's fine. If you, want, if you want to keep that, we have seven hundred thousand we put in, so we can. It's, that's two hundred seventy thousand dollars we can use or reduce. Well, do you want to reduce that one and then just put in a new ordinance, or you want to use part of that for the roads? Add it to roads. I'm saying that we start this <coughs> now. We could actually hit that ordinance now. No, I'm saying instead of having seven hundred for roads, go to seven seventy-two for roads. Yeah, even more than that. You have two. But I'm no, 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 I'm saying the bad ordinance allows you to use it for roads. Right. So, if you want. so, so that right. should become so the 700 should become 772. Right. So instead of canceling that, you would use that. Yeah. Put it into the 19 budget and add 72. But the other ones are roads too. The other. The so other we should add them all yeah, to roads and give Boswell more money to, to to redo roads this year. Well, you got to decide whether you want to cancel these or you want to use some of them. You could cancel them and then borrow less. Let's ask Mr. May and Mr. Beinfeld no. there, and your, you guys get together and tell us what. Well, we did have that conversation, and they, they, they have the opinion that maybe you should leave some of them open if you want it, because you could use some of them for roads and for some improvements. That's fine. I mean, we have 700. If we use 200 of this for roads and we have spent 500, then we're still, we're still ahead of the game, right? Of course, we, did, right. we don't I mean, have we to take out. We can leave those two open, the 700. But we don't have to bond or ban 700. We can do 500 and use 200 from here. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay, you would, so you would bond, you would, either a, whether you cancel or you borrow against this, you're still going to bond right. less. So I'm in agreement with that. Okay. okay. Let's, for the next meeting, if we get out the resolution, yes. what we're doing with it. Thank you. Motion, um, that's, that wraps up our agenda. Uh, resolution. Just one other thing, Mike, on the yes, year to date. Yep. I just want to I just want to make sure we don't lose sight that we do get year to date numbers to show what we've spent now that the budget's in. Judy, the four year budget. I want to ask that. Do you want that um, on a monthly basis? Yes. Second meeting of the month would be okay? That'd be fine. Well, whenever you close, you probably it's probably gonna be the third you know, the second well, it'd be the, meeting. It'd be the second meeting of the month for the prior month. Right, the prior month, right. Yeah. Second meeting of the month mm -hmm. for the month before. <coughs> okay. Will it be um, will it be analysis against it? I mean, um, it's great just to have the numbers, but are, are we going to do any analysis against uh, our budget? Are we going to do any forecasting? Uh, is there a need to understand if where we're going to have potential shortfalls, especially if we're going to be asked to make uh, reclasses? Well, that's what I'm doing right now. As a matter of fact, what I'm doing is, um, I know in the past it seemed that people would just try to charge something somewhere. I'm actually charging to the line item where it, be, where it belongs. So that might become overexpended, but there'll be enough in the control account. But you <clears> know that maybe perhaps next year you need more money in printing for administration. Okay. The only way you can properly budget anyway. Yes. So Judy, um, you know I've had a great concern about uh, following our uh, electrical grant, the direct install project <coughs> that uh, I completed for the council and the mayor, uh, with all the new air conditioning and so on and so forth. And now we're going to move into hopefully energy management. But I am having trouble tracking the watts and kilowatts. Um, is there a time when I could uh, review the paper invoices? Sure. Okay. Anytime can, you want. Dina has I, them all. She has them all? Yes, okay. she does. That's great. Okay. Thanks a lot.
Gentlemen, resolution number 19-228, um, whereas the public is- I've got all the account numbers. We're uh, motion to enter into closed session to discuss PBA mm -hmm. negotiations and personnel in the police department. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Cumming? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President DeSanto? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Let's take a five-minute recess, and we'll start after that.